Hello everyone and welcome to Spring Academy. This is the second episode about Spring Data JDBC. Today we are going to talk about mapping relationships. If you haven't seen the previous episode, check it out over somewhere here. This is a 10 minutes introduction, so it explains all the basic concepts, all the whys and whats, how does it compare to Spring Data JPA. Before we jump to the actual code, there's one thing. The current version, which is 1.0.2, is a little bit buggy, or at least not all the features that I wish there were are implemented. So all the examples that I'm doing are based on the snapshot version, which are going to be released together with 1.1. So most likely quite soon, definitely this year. So this is a fresh Spring Boot project with extra dependencies for Spring Boot Starter Data JDBC and PostgreSQL driver. The thing that we have to modify here is that we have to tell Maven to use different version of Spring Data JDBC. We can do it by specifying a property, which will be in this case Spring Data Release Train version. And the version we are interested in is called Moore Build Snapshot. I already added here one entity called Movie, which has very basic properties. There's an ID and title and description. So Spring Data recommends to add a all arguments constructor for framework to use internally. And I also created a movie repository that extends from CRUD repository together with a corresponding SQL statement for creating a table on application startup. So let's start now with adding a one-to-one -one relationship to a rental entity. So in our scenario, a movie can be rented and rental has its period so we can use duration data type and it will also have a price and just for the simplicity we can use an integer so now let's add a reference to rental entity from the movie class there is no need to add anything like a one-to-one -one annotation it's just implicitly known for spring data jdbc that this is going to be a one-to-one -one mapping so the next step is to add a new table for rental. One important thing is there is no ID in rental. Since it's a one-to-one -one relationship, the ID of rental will be the same as ID of a movie. So it is required to here add the same column name as the referencing entity. So in our case, it will be a movie. And we say that this is going to be an integer that it's a primary key that references movie table by ID. And it has a duration that is by default expressed by text and the price, which is an integer. Let's check if our code actually works. I will create a test that creates a new movie entity. Save it in the database and prints out the result. Here we can see that all the fields are set properly. So our mapping worked both for saving and for loading entities. Now the question that may pop up in your mind is, can we map it differently? Could we, for example, keep these two classes separately, but instead of creating a separate table, just move these two fields into the movie table. And unfortunately, this is not really possible right now. There is no annotation or no way to say that this entity is embedded here. So if we would like to keep them in a single table, we should also move these fields into the movie entity. Supporting embedded entities is reported already in Jira, so there's a hope that at some point it will be implemented. The lifecycle of rental entity is dictated by the movie, so we don't create a separate repository for rental class, we just always access rental through the movie. And same applies for deleting rentals. If we would like to delete now the rental for the uh, movie we just created, we don't call anywhere delete on the rental entity, but rather we set rental to null 
on the movie we just created. Let's see how it works in action. So here I will need to add another setter to be able to set rental to null. And now if I set it to null and save it again, we should be able to see what SQL statements are sent to the database. This is the first insert that maps to this line 23. Then we insert movie, we insert rental, we select them all. And then once we set the rental to null and save the movie, it executed delete from rental. What about mapping one to many relationships? Spring Data JDBC here is a little bit more flexible. So we can use either sets, lists, or maps to map relationship between parent and a child entity. I guess the most common is just using set. This also brings the easiest way to map it in the database. Let's modify our use case a little bit. And instead of having one rental option, we will say that this is a set of rentals. So the movie can be rented for one day, for seven days and so on. Instead of set rental method, I will change it to add rental. And now if we go to the test, instead of setting it like this, I will just say that this is rentals. And for seven days, we will set the price to 10. This will of course not work yet because the, we will add two rentals here without changing the database schema. It will scream about duplicate primary key. We need to add here an ID and take the primary key from the reference, but there is no need to modify the rental entity itself. So let's now run the test. And we can see that both rentals have been saved. The interesting thing happens when we want to modify the movie entity. So let's say that we want to change the title. And we will call it matrix two. The set title does not exist. And save it again. And when we look at the SQL statements that were executed, we will see that this is the first saving of the movie. So it saved movie, saved rentals. But then when we save it again, it deleted all the rentals and then updated the movie and then inserted all the rentals again. And the reason is that Spring Data JDBC, unlike Hibernate, does not use any type of proxies, So it doesn't really track the changes and it doesn't have a way to know if the rental has been removed or not. So instead it just deletes all the children and then adds them again. Or if a child was really deleted, then it of course skips it. And this is uh, something to consider because it means that it may execute for huge collections, quite a lot of insert statements that can potentially hit your performance. If we need to persist a collection, and maintain the order, instead of using sets, we should use here a list. Spring Data JDBC support this without any issues. The only thing is that we need to add a special column that will maintain the index. And this column has to be named as the referencing entity underscore key. And now if we, we have to modify the test a little bit, we need to migrate the data structure from set to list. And when we run the test, it will work pretty much the same. But if we look into the database structure, there will be this one extra column with indices filled with zero and one. It is also possible to map relationships using maps. So I will just change here the type of rentals to hash map of string to rental. And the only thing that we need to change is the corresponding column type in the database. So in, since I use string as a key, I have to change the movie key here to text. What about many to one and many to many relationships? Spring Data JDBC supports them, but in slightly different way than we are used to from Spring Data JPA. 
I will cover all the Manitou X relationships plus auditing, event system and design considerations in next episodes. So if you want to learn more about Spring Data JDBC or Spring and Java in general, consider subscribing to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button below and if you have any questions about Spring Data JDBC, please leave it in a comment. And I hope to see you next time.